Hello everybody, this is Jose Blasco. We are about to start the session. Uh, right now you can see the information on the screen when it comes to the chat room and the chat room key. So please take a moment to input the room key in speakup.info. Uh, could be uh, the website, could be uh, your mobile app. Uh, just input the room key number so we can chat during the session and be a bit more interactive. Uh, let me uh, go ahead and one second. Let me go ahead and uh, show myself on the screen so I can say hello properly and we can begin the session. How are you, everybody? I'm saying hi here from the bottom uh, right side of the screen, as always. Again, you can see on the screen the information. If you are joining now, you can see on the screen the information about uh, getting into the room key. Okay, I can see Joe is already here with us. Wonderful, Joe. Good to see you. And uh, everyone else, uh, please, uh, I will leave the room key number there so you can join at any moment in time. Take your time. But when you get in the room, please say hi. So I know you got it, and I know you are in, and I know who is with us today, and again, ready to, to begin the session. Cool. So um, welcome, my friends. Um, I haven't done something that I should do, which is I need to highlight a financial disclaimer on the bottom part of the screen. So let me do that for a few moments so you have time to read it. As, as always, you know, this is important information. Even though you may have read it already, it's indeed important. Uh, and as we are getting organized with a disclaimer, with you entering the room and all of this, uh, I would like to talk about the session for today so we get organized as well when it comes to what is it that we're going to cover. So I have received a, a couple of suggestions of um, um, items or topics that it would be good to discuss. Um, happy to address anything else as long as we have time, you know, uh, certainly I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you. This is a trading and review session. so. I'm here to help you and to review and to uh, go over whatever is it that you need in your trading, no matter your trading style, no matter the asset, Forex, futures, options, stocks, CFDs, you name it. So um, you guys let me know, okay? Uh, but anyway, the, the two suggestions I have received, uh, and I wonder if Mark is with us. Uh, Mark, if you are with us, say hi on the chat box, please. Uh, if you haven't said hi, I'm, I'm assuming that you are probably logging in at this moment in time. But anyway, so the, um, the two suggestions I have received actually came from, from Mark. Uh, one of them um, took place in one of our um, uh, open meetings. Uh, and for the ones of you that may not know what the open meetings are, so maybe a good idea would be for me to, to bring the website to the screen as we are starting the session and getting organized. So you, you become aware of this because it's very useful. The, the, the coaching that we are doing now uh, live uh, is available only for our coaching members, uh, even though then we post it on the, um, on the YouTube channel, isn't it, with a, with a few hours of delay, so everybody can really access it. But for the open meetings, uh, you just need to scroll down in the bottom part of the, to all the way to the bottom part of the page, and you have here trader meetings, and by clicking there, you just follow the instructions, and you will get in our Discord meeting room. Uh, that meeting room has the purpose of meeting. So it's not a webinar like today where I take the lead and it's all the way me. In the meetings, we talk about several things and anyone and everyone at some point could share the screen. Everybody's using video camera. I mean, if you're in a, if you're in a public place, so you can turn it off, but everybody is using microphones and we, we are just having a meeting. We do those open meetings twice a month on second and... Uh, the, sorry, was it no, on the first and the third um, Monday of, of the month, okay? So we do it twice a month. So in one of those meetings, Mark, uh, which I'm not sure you are with us, Mark, uh, please let me know. Uh, I would really like you to be here uh, as I go over what you, what you were requesting. So Mark was requesting to uh, go over the setup with NinjaTrader, which is the platform that we typically utilize for uh, futures trading. So uh, Mark needed a little bit of support when it comes to the use of the platform, setting up the charts, setting up auto UFO, setting up the combination of timeframes, um, again, all, all of that. So obviously today I'll be more than happy to go over this so so we can we can work on that. And then the other topic that I received, and by the way, let me go back to the web webpage uh, because it was there. The other topic that we have received, I've been told today, uh, by our support team in the Q&A forum, uh, which again, this is accessible for, this is for everyone. So we have here uh, on the Q&A forum, 
And the last question that was posted was a question on directional calendars. Uh, and Mark uh, was uh, requesting, if possible, to go over how to build directional calendars uh, using top. Okay, so those are the two items. Hey, Mark, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. I see the, your confirmation now. So basically, today, the idea is to go over those two topics. Uh, and um, yeah, I guess that this may take us the, the whole time. But again, if you have additional questions or you have questions along the way, uh, no need to say that you know uh, those questions are more than welcome. And please make sure you type them on the chat box, and, and that way we can uh, we can team up. Uh, and I know what you need, and I can help you better. Jeff, how are you, my friend? It is good to see you as well. This is great. Okay, so let's begin then with the first with the first topic, which is the topic related to uh, Ninja Trader. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize my screen, and what you see here now is, and let me get rid of these so we have a bit more space on on the screen. What you see here is my city, Valencia, actually. <laughs> this is my Windows desktop, and uh, and uh, if I bring this here, let me move it here because I have it on a different page. So this is the Ninja Trader Control Center, okay, which is the tool that we utilize to enable charts. You can go to New and create charts. You can go to connections and set up your connections. You can go to workspaces and you know, save your workspaces and all of those things. So uh, what I'm going to do is basically uh, start from scratch because you know you, you may know, you may have seen uh, when you get your auto climate, uh, you, we send you, um, let me move the control center out of the way. OK, well, I'll, do, I'll do it like that. Here we go. Uh, wait a moment, I got a, a message which I need to validate. Yes. Yes. Okay. So when when you load a, when you load this predefined workspace, uh, of course every um, computer screen is different. Every computer or monitor is different. And even though when you subscribe to Auto Climate or Auto UFOs on Ninja Trader, we send you those predefined workspaces. The fact is that in most of the cases, the windows are not looking like mine, meaning meaning that they are not exactly in the right place. Um, so you need to reposition those windows, right? And same thing happens if you were to load the auto UFOs workspace. Okay, so same story. So here's the auto UFOs workspace. Okay, it looks like this. And again, uh, by default, those windows need to be repositioned because they are not positioned in the right place. Because again, because of the nature of how Ninja Trader works. Okay, Ninja Trader works in a way where every single component is a floating window. Hey, Mark. Yes, you have been a bit active in recent times in the forum. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure why. You know, the, the forum that we have now works better than the, the one we used to have, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I definitely welcome everyone to, to participate and post questions and, and, and look into it. Anyway, so uh, I was saying that with Ninja Trader, every window is a separate component. It's a floating window. Nothing in Ninja Trader occurs inside the main application, right? It's not like the majority of platforms. For example, I'm bringing it top, right? And in top, you can certainly, you know, open a, let's say, a chart, and then you can click on float. And once you float it, this is a free window that you can then move into another monitor, for example. Well, um, the majority of platforms work similar to this, where you have like a, a parent window, if you wish, which in this case is the outside of top here. And inside that parent window is where everything lives. And if any, with some platforms like top, you can float, float things out, right? Well, with NinjaTrader, everything is floating. Every component, a chart, a market analyzer, an alert log, the, the control center itself, which is the, um, the, the, key, the key window here where you, you know, basically log in and log out and everything else, the, the, control, the control center is also a floating window. Everything is floating. And this is beautiful because it gives you so much flexibility. But it's also confusing, especially if you have many, many windows and you never work with a platform where everything is floating. It's a bit confusing. And if you change the monitor, you know, everything is moving around. You need to readjust everything. Again, like everything in life, it has pros and cons. Okay. So professional platforms are like this. Okay. You look at, you know, CQG, TT, 
you know, professional platforms, they are all like that. It's all about floating windows. But in the retail space, typically retail traders are more used to platforms where everything resides inside a piece of software. And therefore, uh, Ninja, uh, at first, uh, often looks a little bit intimidating, even though it's not a big deal. So now, uh, in, in this case, I was showing you that basic setup with a chart, an alert log window, and a market analyzer window. Uh, but also, you have seen me or Boyan all the time in the future sessions use something more complex, uh, like uh, our UFO trading uh, desktop, which is a uh, workspace, which is loading now, which is made of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven charts plus the, the dome. Okay, seven charts uh, plus the dome. So all of these together, you know, again, if all of these are floating windows and every one of them is moving around and when you load it for the first time, it's not in the right place. So again, it's 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 often, often confusing, right? So the first thing I would like to do here is to you know, now that I have explained this, what I would like to do is I would like to close all those workspaces I have. Okay, so let me close them. No, I don't want to save. Close the auto UFOs as well. No, I don't want to save. And I will also close the UFO trading. Close. No. I don't want to save. And therefore, I'm going to start fresh and I'm going to build something together here that hopefully uh, will help everyone to understand how to use um, a, a Ninja Trader uh, more efficiently. Okay. So now, notice that I've been using the term workspace many times. Okay. So again, if you are coming from the world of TradeStation, for example, a workspace is something that resides inside a TradeStation. Um, in NinjaTrader, the workspace is like the pages we top. A workspace is whatever distribution of floating windows you have in whichever monitors, when you save that workspace, all of this is being saved in that one thing called workspace. So again, it's exactly the same as pages with top, if you happen to be a top user. It is not the same as workspaces with TradeStation, where a workspace, by definition, lives in one monitor only. In this case, the workspace is whatever you have, where wherever it is, you may have windows that are spread across monitors. When you save the workspace, those windows and those locations are saved. So when you reopen it the next time, um, everything will appear where it was before you closed the platform, okay? That's our workspace. So I'm gonna start with a, a new workspace, okay? I'm gonna call it test. Okay, so I'm just building a new workspace and calling it test. This is going to be saved on your documents folder in, in if you use Windows. So it's going to be saved in your documents folder. And inside documents, you have a NinjaTrader 8 uh, folder. And inside, you have a workspace folder. So that's going to be saved there. In case you want to rename it or you want to move it around or you want to uh, make it read-only or whatever you want to do, know that the file is there inside your documents folder in Windows. So I'm going to click OK. And notice that now uh, I am with a green color next to test. Okay, next to test. Um, in other words, this is the active workspace, which happens to be an empty workspace that has nothing because we created it from zero. It's a new workspace and it has nothing. So now I need to start adding things. And typically, what you would do is that you would go for new. And this is where you would start adding things. So, for example, charts. Okay, so let's say I want to work with two charts. Okay, so you click on chart. Uh, and notice that the moment you click on chart, it doesn't show you a chart. It shows you a menu for you to select which instrument. Okay, so the way NinjaTrader works is that it doesn't load you a chart which is blank, and then you type the symbol. Even on the first loading uh, process, you need to specify a specific symbol. So um, in Ninja, you, you have already predefined lists which are very useful, which typically you would find what you need. Let's say you want to trade S&P futures. So you go to futures and you pick S&P. Uh, but of course, you can uh, customize these things as well. And then once you have your favorite symbols, you can actually pin them. You can see here how I have pins. So and the way to pin, like, let's say I want to pin Bitcoin. So notice, or I want to pin, pin Home Depot. Notice when I put my mouse, there is a little pin that shows up where if I click on it, now, 
Home Depot will be part of my list. If I unpin it, then it's gone. Okay. Uh, so I have the S&P here. If I didn't have it, I would just go to Futures, select S&P if that's the market you want. And the moment you do that, uh, you have more properties uh, to be selected before you validate and you go OK, and then the chart loads, right? So in this case, price is based on last. Uh, the type of chart, maybe you want, uh, you know, maybe you want a, a daytime frame uh, with one day, and maybe you just want to load, um, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, bars. You want to load a thousand bars. Okay, so let's say you you predefine all of these. I mean, there are many many options with with Ninja Trader. Again, it's a it's a it's a professional platform, so there are many things there for you to to work with colors and all sorts of things, right? Um, again, if I was to cover everything, we would not have time in one hour. So I'm covering what's most relevant, okay? So you input the symbol, select the time frame, the type of charts, the amount of data you want, and then you click OK. And magic, magic, a chart is loading, which, by the way, is loading in my main monitor, which is not the one I'm sharing. So let me drag it here. Okay, and now you can see the chart that was uh, in a different monitor, okay? This is the chart, okay? Now, what can I do with this? Well, first thing is select where you want it. Okay. Do I want it on the top? Do I want it in the middle? Do I want it maximized? What What do I want to do with that chart? Right. Is the is the first thing that you need to decide. Uh, of course, uh, a very um, useful tool uh, in this case uh, is the fact that you could use the the Windows functionality to put charts in certain places in a way that is automated. You may know this or you may not know this, but if you hold the Windows key on your keyboard. And from there, you hit the right, the right or left uh, arrow. So this is gonna adjust your chart automatically. I just did um, sorry about that. I just did um, um, Windows uh, and right arrow. So this was automatically pushed to be perfectly aligned using half of my monitor on the right. If I did left arrow, so now the thing is happening on the left. Okay, and this really helps you if you want to have a couple of charts only or something like that, this is very useful. If you want to have more charts, then you need to work on adjusting those things manually. Okay. Um, so now let's say let's say I want to have three charts. Okay, well, I would need to you know find a way to more or less des design these as thirds, okay? Which you know is not obvious. Okay, you may need to move right and left, you know, until you kind of adjust it. Or maybe you can use other tricks. Um, and yes, I said tricks. Such as, for example, uh, you can open a notepad. And you're gonna be like, "What? A notepad? Yes." So any any Windows that is not Ninja Trader, this is a notepad. It could be anything. It could be like Microsoft Word. It could be the Explorer, whatever. But the thing is that this is not Ninja Trader. This is a Windows, right? A Windows window. So what happens is a window a Windows application. So what happens is that if I click and hold the header. And I move up. Notice what appears here on the top of window. I got all those predefined uh, possibilities for location. So let's say I want thirds. Okay, and that's a third, and that's a third, and that's a third. I cannot do that with Ninja Trader. Okay, I cannot do that with Ninja Trader. I cannot grab the header and bring here on the top. Nothing happens. Okay, nothing happens. It does not work. Okay, uh, I guess it's because of the, the type of functionality they've built on those windows. Those charts are designed for performance. So I don't know if this has something to do with it or whatever, but the fact is that you cannot use the windows functionality. That's why I was talking about using a little trick. So notice the trick. If I put a, a window, whatever window in the middle, using the windows functionality, again, I'll do it one more time. You just push up and you go for the middle. Okay, the moment I release that, Okay, uh, Windows is gonna tell me what do you want on the other places, and I could select a chart, and guess what? Now the chart is right there, exactly using a third, like perfectly. I did not, I did not need to adjust it. Uh, next, I can do the same. Go back to the control center, and then I can do new, uh, another chart, and then I may select uh, crude oil. This is just uh, random, obviously, and now I click OK, and now a chart is being loaded on my other computer screen. 
So I'm bringing it here. Okay. And now guess what? So I can use, let me move this out of the way to avoid problems. So now I can move, uh, I can use the functionality that I told you before with the Windows key and then arrow to the right. And when I do that, okay, in this case, it did not adjust as perfectly. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, I feel that it also depends on the update of Windows you have because I had times where it worked and then it stopped and then it came back. But anyway, so now you can adjust manually like this. And when you get to the edge where that notepad is in the middle, you can just now kill the notepad. And you know those two windows are exactly a third. And now if you wanted your third chart, uh, so now I'm going to do it. So again, are you, you're going to tell me, this is very manual. This is Yeah, but that's the benefit and the downside of having floating windows all the time. The benefit is that you can really have 27 windows with 27 charts, if you wish, uh, or whatever other number you'd like. Uh, so you can really create setups which are exactly customized to whatever you need, even though it takes time to adjust those windows. But at the same time, if you only want a few uh, of those, like for example, let's say three, so you can use those, you know, let's say little tricks uh, as you see me use, uh, you know, by using some of the windows functionality. And now I guess you are with me that this is pretty well adjusted and it's very precisely adjusted to two thirds. Okay. So what do you do now? Well, now you can come, come to your control center and you go to the workspace. And now you come here to test and you save. And the moment you save this, okay, so let me close it now. Uh, okay, yes. So if I now open test, so my three charts are gonna come back to this uh, beautiful position of one third each. So again, Beginning part of this of this uh, lecture, if you wish, or lesson, or you know, session, um, it's about teaching you a few tricks related to Ninja Trader, right? And so, first concept was it's all floating. It has pros and cons, and therefore, second concept, you can use some of, some of the Windows tricks that work with other window up Windows applications to kind of make your life easier when it comes to adjusting the windows on the screen, so you don't go crazy, you know, and you. You need a maximizing maximizing glass to adjust, you know, where to stop dragging and things like that, right? So, so you can use a little bit of that functionality to to create setups that look sy symmetric, look neat, and that you feel comfortable when you use. Okay, so this is a little bit of of the thing. Yeah, uh, so that's the first thing I wanted to mention. Um, I see no comments, questions on the on the screen, so I guess all is good. Um, but especially Mark, if you have. And everybody, but especially Mark, since, since this was your question, um, you know, make sure you lead me where you need me to go, just in case I explain things about Ninja Trader that you already know and that are not useful to you. So if there is any specific, very specific need that you have, this is a good time for you to tell me as well, okay? Uh, now, uh, what else is, is possible with Ninja? Well, there are many, uh, there are many uh, other tools that you could utilize, okay? So you have level two screens, you have boards, you have, you know, all sorts of things. So a tool, I would say there are two more tools that you need to know about because again, this is a fantastic platform so we can spend hours and hours talking about it. But I would say there are two tools that you could not miss. You know, you would it would, re, it would really be a big miss, which is the market analyzer, uh, which has loaded on the other screen. So let me, it here and again this is going to be a floating window and the other tool i also want to mention especially for the active futures traders uh, it's going to be your your dome okay so you have your your super dome here uh, which obviously is going to be another very powerful tool and very needed which i am dragging here okay so again how do you deal with those tools it's the same thing you just put them wherever you need them okay so let's say you would like to have the dome here, okay? So that will take some adjustment. Uh, you will need to you will need to move those charts and adjust them. And you know, let's pretend this is what you like. So notice that the adjustment is totally manual, which again, it has these advantages, but also many advantages because you can really set up whatever you want. And while it's a bit tedious at the beginning when you set it up, the fact is that once it's done, it's forever, right? So it's very convenient. And then you have the market analyzer as well, and um, 
And uh, so here, what I'm going to do is this. And now that I have it here in this position, so let's pretend you want a market analyzer in the bottom part of the screen. And I'm going to adjust it like this. And then I'm going to get those two charts. Adjust it like that. So this is going to be one. And this is going to be the other one. Like this. So let's say this is what, sorry, I did not, I did, I did not adjust this correctly. Right here. This is now what I needed. Okay, so I got my market analyzer, my two charts on the top, the dome, and then a chart on the right. Okay, so I, I, I'm, you know, this is looking better now, right? So, now, so what's the market analyzer? Well, the market analyzer is a fantastic tool where you could insert, you can add the instruments could be one or it could be multiple. For example, let's say you want to add, um, you know, uh, you know, you want to add the euro, crude oil, and the S and P. I'm just gonna use three. So you right click, add the euro futures, then right click, add the crude oil, and then right click, add the S and P. So now you have those three markets there. And you can add more columns, which will represent market data or indicators or, you know, UFOs, whatever it is. So in the format of the columns, right? So instead of plotting things in a format of a chart, which utilizes a lot of real estate on, on the screen, so the market analyzer allows you to plot things in a table format, which may help you very much as a screener, as a permission tool, and things of that sort. Okay, so I'm um, gonna get deeper into that. Let me take a look at the chat box. Um, that cleared up some confusion. Nice to hear, Mark. Load in the preset workspace that you email me. Well, if I load it, uh, I have it set up on my computer where it shows in the right place for everything, right? So in your case, you won't. In, in no one's case, because each computer and monitor is different. So while you will be loading the same windows I have, the location of the windows will never be the same. So you're going to have to drag them one at a time. You will have to drag them one at a time manually. Okay, So you have to do that. And once you have done that, then you save the workspace. And then next time you open your computer, everything will be looking beautiful in the right, in the right location. right? But um, I could not do what you are suggesting me to do because, you know, I mean, I, I, mean, I could do it, but it would all look perfect. You know what I mean? Unless... You have a specific question about one of the charts, and this is not, uh, maybe I'm anticipating wrong the reason why you were asking me. So Mark, please uh, elaborate on that so I can help you better. But again, bottom line, whatever we send you, you need to move it around, rearrange it, because each computer is unique, and then you save the workspace. Okay, This is one of the benefits and disadvantages of NinjaTrader, where everything being floating means that everything takes the kind of like the property of your computer, like its own property, and therefore, even if I send you a file that is saved as a read-only, doesn't matter. The, lo the location of the windows will never match someone else's computer because each computer is unique. Okay? Cool. Okay, so what else? Um, well, with the market analyzer or the charts, something that we always do, of course, is to insert indicators. So to do that, you right-click and you find indicators. Okay, you right-click and you find indicators. And then you add whatever you want. For example, the UFOs, which are here. So you double click on it. So auto UFOs went down to configured. And then when you click OK, magic, magic, here are your UFOs. OK? Um, now, same thing can be done with the market analyzer. You can go right click, OK? But you will not find the option indicator. Instead, you will find the option columns because you could add columns. And those columns could be indicators or could be specialized columns. So notice that we have specialized columns called autoclimate and auto-UFOs. They are already there waiting for us. But you could also, if you scroll down, you can also look for the I. And there is, I want my column to be an indicator. So you could do that. So if I add my column to be an indicator, by default, it's going to take ADL which is the first one on the list, which then here on the right, you will need to change. Let's say you want ATR. 
So you would select the ATR, then you would need to select the time frame instead of the one minute ATR, maybe you want the daily ATR. And now if I click OK, this just got inserted a column with the daily ATR for those futures markets. Okay, notice the columns on the left have no time frame. The ask price, the bid price, and the last price is just market data. There is no time frame. But for this one is ATR daily. I could add another ATR 60 minutes, for example. So I could add different indicators with different time frames. It's done by, one more time, selecting column and then selecting, look for indicator, double click so it goes down under configure. When you double click, it will make it ADL by default. Why? Because ADL is the first one in the list. So you can pick whatever you like. Let's say you want Bollinger's. So you pick Bollinger. And what do you want? You want the upper band or the bottom band or the middle band? Maybe you want the middle band. So you select that. Again, select the time frame. Let's say you want daily, or maybe you want 60 minutes. You do that. You click OK. And now you will have a column which is Bollinger, the middle, in the 60 minute time frame. Those are the values. Okay. Uh, in the case of auto UFOs and auto climate, since this is very important to us, I will make a special mention. We actually have coded this in a way that is more intelligent. Instead of having auto UFO and auto climate as an indicator, we have it as a column already pre coded for you. So let's say you want the UFO stats. So you just select UFO stats. Okay. Uh, and uh, again, double click. So it goes down. And once you have it down again, you can now select how many bars um, and um, you can also select which time frame. So maybe you want to apply it to the two minute time frame. Okay. So you click OK. And now you have your presented stats here for the two minute time frame um, in, in here on the right. Okay. Um, okay, so um, now what else? Uh, I need to go back to the charts, but before, notice that there is also uh, a, um, a little bit uh, like a square, if you wish, a squarish type of button here, which help us to link windows with other windows. So let's say I want to link everything. And let's say I, I like red. So I'm going to pick red color. And if I do the same, with the chart, not the interval link, but the instrument link. Okay, instrument link red, instrument link red, and here instrument link red, and also the dome, instrument link red. And now let's say I click on Euro. So guess what? Everything is loading now, loading, loading, loading. So everything is gonna be changing to the Euro. The dome already changed to the Euro. Uh, my charts, um, for whatever reason, they're taking time. Here we go. They load it. Okay. And now notice how everything is Euro. In other words, I am using the market analyzer not only to find the, the information I need, but on top of that, uh, it's also helping me to avoid typing or clicking in places. I can just switch all my charts with one step by clicking in one place directly. Okay. Uh, so now everything is crude oil because I just click on crude oil. So I do that thanks to the feature of uh, instrument linking, which is available in those windows. Furthermore, on the charts, you also have the possibility of linking the time frame. So let's say I want the two charts on the right to be the same time frame, and I want to make that to be golden color. And let's say I want the time frame to be, um, I want the time frame to be I don't know, 60 minutes. Okay. So if I do that, the moment I do 60 minutes on the right. The one in the middle also changed to 60 minutes, as you can see here. Okay, Why? Because they are linked with a golden color, even though the one on the left is still daily, because that one had no linkage, uh, uh, and therefore there was no change, while the other two did change. Okay, If I take the one in the middle, which is linked with golden, and I change it to, let's say, five minutes, guess what? The one on the right is about to change. One, two, three. Here we go. The one on the right and the middle change because they are linked, not only based on the symbol, but also based on the time frame. Okay, so again, those are basics that you tend to find in, in many trading platforms. But I think it's it's important that you know uh, those things to to move around uh, more efficiently with with Ninja. Okay, and there is one more thing that I think would be useful for me to show you. Um, but again, as always, I need some feedback from you guys. Uh, how is it going so far, everybody? How is it going? Uh, if you are entering the the room at this moment in time. Uh, you may see on the upper left uh, our chat room key. 
For you to get access to the chat, you need to go to the website speakup.info and then you input the room key and then you'll be able to chat with us. Okay, just in case you are new to what we do uh, and you know you you didn't you didn't see speakup.info earlier. So no, that's how you get to the chat room. Okay, that way we keep the chat. Um, you know, uh, visible between us, but more private. Good. Thanks for that, Jeff. Thank you so much. Now, um, so the last thing I would like to show you is how can you um, plot uh, certain values? For example, uh, I'm going to use the, the upper chart on the left that has the UFOs. I want to remove the UFOs. And instead of UFOs, I am going to find um, I'm going to find um, here we go. Hey, where are you? Oh, silly me. Um, yeah, silly me. Here we go. EMA. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So I'm going to add an EMA. Okay. So double click. The EMA by default comes with 14. Let's say you're okay with that. Um, calculated on the bar close. Well, you may want the EMA to move. So as the price changes, you know you want the EMA to be recalculated. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, just to get a typical one, I'm gonna use 21 uh, for the daily time frame, And I'm gonna click okay, okay? So now here on the right, I got a 21 EMA based on the daily time frame of crude oil. So what if I wanted that 77.5 number to be plotted on the chart of the right? How can I do that? How can I get results from one chart plotted in other charts? Got you, Jeff. Uh, you want to see the order placement, okay? So I'm, I'm getting there. So one way to do that, uh, which is very powerful, will be to add another data series. In other words, I have a chart which by default comes with one data series, which is the five minute time frame of crude oil. Well, I have an add button here. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, Okay, now, correct. So I just selected instrument crude oil. So I have another crude oil. By default, it came with 15 minutes. And now I'm going to change that to daily. So in other words, I have one chart window, the one that is all the way on the right. And this chart window happens to um, host two data series of the same market. So data is flowing into this window. Data related to the five minute time frame of crude oil and data related to the daily time frame of crude oil. So let me click OK and see what happens. Okay, so now I got those two data windows, okay, one on top of each other. Okay, uh, now this is not what I want exactly. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of tricking this. So for this data series, okay, it says, uh, let me see it. Just having something strange happening on my screen. Okay, yeah, I think I think all is good. Yes. Uh, can you guys please confirm that sound and video, everything is still good? I believe so, but just in case. Okay, so um let me see. Okay, so here it says visible. And here you can say, I don't want it visible. Off. If I click OK now, uh, let me see, did I do it right? Daily. Oh, sorry. Uh, that, that referred to the trading hours. Sorry for that, guys. There are so many platforms and Many of my settings are, as you could imagine, set as default. So there are certain things I don't do every day. So I just got confused here for a moment. Okay. So the problem is that we are we are exactly that's what I wanted to go. So we are we are plot, we are plotting this daily time frame on panel two, which is the bottom part of the chart. So what I want to do is I want to plot it on the same panel, panel one. So if I do that and I click OK, notice how now 
the daily time frame and the five minute time frame are in the same place, which is weird because then you have this long candle showing here that, you know, it's difficult to understand what that is. And what that is is really is the daily price range. That's what that is. This is the daily price range. And obviously, uh, you know, I have added the daily time frame to that chart because I want to calculate a moving average based on the daily data. But I have no intention to plot the daily candle on my five-minute chart. So how can I work with this? Okay, so take a look. I'm going to go back to my data series daily. And here, when it comes to... Uh, let me see... This is executions. Give me a moment, guys, because as I said a moment ago, I don't do this every day. Uh, show draw objects, uh, price market, not that. Display level, oh, chart style. Here we go. That's where it is. I was going from top to bottom. So notice how the candles come with a specific color. What I could do is I could make those candles to be transparent. There is one color called transparent. So if for the daily time frame, I make my candles to be transparent, what happens now is that the daily time frame does not show. Actually, I still I still see the weeks. I haven't changed that. So chart. So bar width zero. One. Uh, candle week and candle body outline. Here we go. So instead of dim, dim gray, I'm going to go for transparent. So now the body outline and the candle wicks, all of it is transparent. So notice how now the daily candle doesn't show anymore. So I have a five minute time frame that looks like a five minute time frame, but only you and I know that behind the scenes, there is also a daily time frame that has been loaded. Okay? Uh, if I zoom in here, you can see it. Okay? Daily and five minutes. I have the two. But by the way, the, the text on the top can be customized, so you can also remove that if you'd like. Um, so now what? Now I can go ahead and insert an indicator on the five-minute time frame, for example, an EMA. Okay, so EMA. But when I select my indicator, double click, I have it in the bottom part. Notice that it says input series by default is selecting five minutes. I could go ahead and tell the system that I want the calculation to be based on the daily data, not the five minutes, even though I'm going to plot it on the five minutes. And if I click OK and I go for it, I got, I don't have what I expected. So let me see what is it that I have done wrong. And this is the thing with, with platforms which are very advanced. You have so many places where you can click and unclick and check and uncheck. And there are so many possibilities for, uh, yeah, so calculate on price change. So it was on bar close. So I believe that probably was the reason. Mm. Yeah, still not. Oh, yes, because I know what it is, or very likely what it is. I'm logging a five minute time frame uh, and I'm asking to calculate the 21. I left it as 14. Yes. So now, not exactly. Now, notice how I got a golden thing here, which is 77.5, which coincides exactly as 77.5, which is what I see on the left which is the daily time frame of crude oil in this case. Okay, changes to 49, now here it's 49. So notice that I, I am now plotting a daily indicator on a five minute time frame uh, by adding this hidden um, uh, data um, series that I, I mentioned. Uh, now, you have more options that to me are better, which is how to plot it. Okay, so you can plot it as a line, but you can also plot it as other things. For example, a horizontal line. This is something that I personally like very much. I'm going to increase the, the width a little bit as well. Okay, because now you have this horizontal line there. 
Okay, imagine if I was to maximize the chart. So you have this horizontal line, okay, which represents the moving average of the daily time frame in the five minute time frame. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll switch to uh, one hour, for example. Okay, and you still have the daily time frame EMA on the one hour chart. Okay, so it's this is very useful, and I just wanted to mention that because indeed in our um, setups that we use for futures trading, we use that as well. And I think it's a it's a great feature. Let me load it so you see it. And hopefully now you will have a greater understanding of, of how our UFO trading setup was, was set up. Uh, the feed is breaking up repeatedly. Oh, wow. Um, I'm not sure about what, why is that happening. Everything looks good on my end at the moment. Maybe it was a little bit of an internet problem. Is everything okay now? Uh, could you please confirm everything is okay? So I just loaded while you are confirming everything is okay, hopefully. Uh, I just um, went ahead and loaded this more complex setup um, where you know you can see the chart, you can see the linking, you can see the horizontal line, which is the EMA from the 15 minute time frame applied to a volume chart, um, you know, all of those things. Okay. Now, uh, last conversation about placement of orders. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go for it. Again, I would really like to get confirmation that you guys are with me on everything we've done so far. That would be great. I know there is a little bit of delay. I'll take a sip if you don't mind in the meantime. Oh, this is, I'm so sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I'm looking at all the parameters of my internet connection, my computer, CPU, GPU, everything. Everything looks totally normal. So I guess I'll keep going. I'm so sorry about that. Hopefully the um, uh, the recording when posted has n does, not, does not have this problem. Anyway, so um, order placement, okay? So this is a Jeff question now. So for order displacement, Order placement, you need to know that NinjaTrader has something called the ATM strategy. Okay, the ATM strategy. And this is something quite powerful, to be honest, because you could define really whatever you want. So when you go to ATM strategy, I have one defined by default, which is stop, safety, and final. That I have it set up by default. So if I was to select that, okay, and I want to take a trade, using my ATM strategy like that, meaning that I'm going to enter the market with the top part of the dome, but then for my exit, I will have a stop and I will have a safety target and I will have a final target automatically set for me. If I wanted to use that, every time I'm about to trade, the only thing you need to do here is very simple. Select your quantity, your timing force, etc., And then you go for edit. And when you click edit, you just set your prices. So let's say, for example, you plan to take a trade um, you know, using this UFO at 80.32. Okay, I'm just making this up. Okay, I didn't plan the trade. I'm the climate. Actually, is totally exhausted. So probably not a good idea, but let's pretend I'm going for it. So if you wanted to take a trade by buying at 80.32, right? So what you would want to do first is edit. Uh, set your stop. Okay, set your stop, stop loss. Uh, in this case, you're gonna be 80.14. Let's call it 80.13. So 80.13, that's my stop. Then you would select what is your profit one. So uh, from 32 to 14 to 13, uh, you are risking um, like what? Like 19. So 19 on top of 32, that's gonna be 51. So target one, 80.51. And let's say target two, just for fun, is going to be 81. Uh, so I don't say I don't waste time looking at the markets. So just it's just an example, 81. So you have your target one, 80.51. That's your safety target, typically one to one, isn't it? This is your final target, 81. And then in case you're wrong, 80.13 below the UFO. That's where your stop is. 
So you would set this, click OK, and then you would want to come and find your AT32. If that was your entry. Oh, yes. Well, the market is moving very fast now, so that UFO is far away. So in this case, it would not make sense to enter the trade now. Uh, let me do it with the upper one. And hopefully, we, we get filled, actually, and, and then it could be an example, a better example. So um, I'm going to plan of using the upper one. So it's going to be 8078, that would be the stop. 8078, that would be the stop. OK? And um, again, I'm just going to make this up. So I'm going to call it. 81.10, my safety one, and 81.50, my final target, okay? This is um, basically made up values, okay? This is for the example of demonstrating how to place the order. So you will do that, and once this is set up, now you look at your entry, 97, which is right here, and you just go left is to buy, right is to sell, so you go on 97, and you just click. And because I had selected quantity two, so now I have this two limit, right there, okay? It's, it's right there, waiting. So the moment the market falls and hits, we are three ticks away, it'd be nice for the market to come. If not, maybe I'll drag it up just to force a fill. We never do that in trading, but just for demonstration, one tick away. We got filled, wonderful, perfect. So notice now how my safety target is there, my stop is there, and then my final target is above, okay? And now you just let the market do its thing, okay? You just let the market do its thing. If you have a time stop, and you have to exit the trade uh, manually. So then you would just click on the button close. That would close and remove all pending orders for, for crude oil. Okay, that's, that's how you do it. Got you, Mark. Thank you for, for sharing this. Um, yeah, again, mm, not sure why, what the reason would be. Um, I'm sorry about that. Okay, um, so any more questions, my friends? Um, I'm looking at the time, really, and uh, Mark, unfortunately, we won't be able to cover the, the um, directional calendars today. Uh, we do not have time, but uh, we'll certainly do it in the next session, and for sure, uh, next Monday when we meet in our, in our um, uh, bi-monthly uh, open meetings, isn't it? So uh, I'll, be happy, I'll be happy to address that 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 topic if, if that's needed as well okay so no no issue but yeah today uh, i guess that we'll be calling it the day in, in a way because we only got eight minutes left which basically gives us time for for nothing else but uh, before before we say bye um i'd like to hear from you guys how is everything going i mean not not only concerning our our ninja trader exploration today but in general um how is trading how is everything going uh, how are the sessions? How are the meetings? Uh, how are the UFOs working for you? Again, in general, how's life? Uh, you guys tell me. It would be good. Um, it would be good to to hear from you, get a little bit of feedback. You will need to look at it a second time. No problem, Jeff. Um, you will have the recordings on the YouTube channel uh, probably tomorrow, isn't it? So no problem. Uh, I'll give you a quick summary one more time again. You want to make sure you have the right symbol loaded. You want to make sure you have the right quantity loaded. You want to make sure you click on edit under ATM strategy. Okay, you click on edit. Now I cannot edit because the strategy is running, so I cannot edit. But you know, I you know I actually even save mine with a specific name, which is cute. Stop safety and final. So I guess it's self-explanatory. So you just click on edit, so you can custom customize the prices for the targets. Okay, uh, and then you just click on the left side of the um, uh, dome for your buy orders on the right side of the dome for your sell orders, and that would enter a limit order, and then you just wait for the market to come to you so you get filled. The moment you get filled, your bracket orders, which is your ATM strategy, will get activated, and it will show on the charts the way it does here. And from there, you're exposed to market movements, the market may be kind to you and get you to your targets, or the market may turn against you and get you stopped out. Now, we are in the trade, and it's all about trade management, which could imply doing nothing or could imply using a time stop, whatever it is that you do in trading. This is a trade used for uh, practice purpose. Really, it's, it's a crazy one, I would say, because climate is 19 out of 5. So unless we are dealing with a totally 
crazy market condition, this trade is extremely likely going to lose. So this is not a quality trade, but the execution part is exactly the process you follow when placing the order, uh, given, uh, given a proper trading plan that gives you the prices. So assuming you have the prices, this is what you do to place, uh, to place your orders. Good, Mark, uh, that was very helpful. Okay, on Monday for calendar, I still don't know the best way uh, to buy the data feeds, use them as a broker or some other way. Well, if you're gonna use, um, if you're gonna use, um, I, I, it does look like crude oil is just pushing uh, big time, uh, unbelievable moves. Uh, anyway, um, if you do use a Ninja Trader as a broker or as a platform, no matter what, you will need to get a data feed and you will have to pay for it. To get access to the four most important exchanges for futures, which is the CME, COMEX, NYMEX, and a, oh my God, I'm missing one. COMEX, NYMEX, CBOT, correct, and uh, CME. I don't know what's happening to me today. So for, for you to get those four exchanges, uh, it's $5 per month, I believe it is, okay? Um, so it's not too expensive, but you will have to pay for it. Um, Ninja Trader does not waive the fees. There is no way. I have tried for our community. Um, believe me, I tried many things to, to try to get some benefits for you guys, but they just don't negotiate it at all. And fair enough in a way, because to be honest, the way the way they provide data is in a in a in a very powerful manner. They have extremely powerful servers to provide you know data with no latency and stuff like that. So to be honest, the quality of the data is very good and they charge five dollars. So I guess is what it is. Now having said that. There are a few possibilities for workarounds that may give you uh, or may not give you data depending on your brokers. You will need to try that. Um, when you go to connections, uh, depending, that also depends if you have a um, like the top version. We just got filled on target one, okay, by the way, and you can see now that the stop has only one contract left and the final target only one contract left. We started with two, now only one is available because we hit the first target. So, uh, good exercise, even though I was not like, expecting it, to be, to be honest. Um, but anyway, coming back to uh, data and all of this. So, if you have the premium version of Ninja, uh, which is a paid version of the software, because if you open a trading account, they will let you use Ninja for free uh, because you have an account. If you don't have an account, they will let you use Ninja for free, but only with end-of-day data. You cannot use intraday data. So if you want to use intraday data and you don't have an account with them, then you need to pay for the software. And you have two ways to buy it. One way, which is one broker only, and the, another way, which is multi-broker. So if you buy, let's call it the premium version, I think it's around $1,500 $1, that you buy it. It's a, it's a one-time fee, that's the good news. But you need to spend $1,500 more or less to have it. And now you have the software. And because it's multi-broker, it will allow you to come to connections, configure, and it will allow you to select um, eSignal, uh, Forex.com, FXCM, Interactive Brokers. Um, it will allow you TD Ameritrade. So with some of those connections, you can get the market data from, let's say, TD Ameritrade into NinjaTrader, so you don't need to pay for market data. Now, having said that, you need to try with TD Ameritrade. I have not tried, to be honest. And also, my account is in Singapore, which is not the same as the US accounts with TD Ameritrade. So you would have to try in the US. But I believe that would be limited to stock data. You will not have futures data for free. Uh, with interactive brokers, you would have futures data, but you also need to pay for market data with interactive brokers, not free data, right? So long story short, it's very difficult for you to not to pay for data if you're going to be using Ninja. But in the end, we're talking about $5 a month. So I guess it's not the end of the world, OK? So uh, pros and cons. Yes, it used to be $12 a month. But it looks like they have reduced it. I believe it's five now. I would say you should talk to a customer representative and, and clarify this because those things are, you know, it's, it's a moving thing. Uh, I believe uh, it's it's five dollars. I believe that's what it is. Anyway, so now uh, look, uh, let's conclude the session and also let's pretend that for whatever reason it was time for you to close the trade manually. Maybe you had a time stop. So out of demonstrating it, I'm just gonna click on the close button. One, two, three, close. The moment you click close, the whole thing is closed and you're out of the trade. You see no lines on the charts anymore. Uh, this trade made $350. Thank you very much. We got so lucky here, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much, crude oil. But um, 
this is how it looks like. If it was a losing trade, it would be red color. If it's a profitable trade, it's green color. And that's it. So very visual, very cool, pretty professional tools, to be honest. The downside, if you wish, floating windows will take a bit more time for you to adjust, but then you save it as a workspace and it's there forever. So could be seen as a disadvantage, not a big one. Uh, maybe not even a disadvantage, maybe an advantage, depending on what you're looking to do. And when it comes to... Um, when it comes to uh, market data, uh, yes, you, you have to pay for it, but I don't believe it's $12. I believe it's 5 Mark. So uh, connect with them, consult. Uh, and this, by the way, maybe you are watching this video. Maybe someone is watching this video one year from now. Probably it'll be different too because market data is a moving thing, right? So, uh, but yeah, um, the, the, it's high quality data. That I will say uh, in their favor. Anyway, everyone, as always, super pleasure to spend those sessions with you guys. I think that, Mark, it was a great suggestion that you had about uh, looking into Ninja. We often focus on top and we, we have our routine in a way. So I think it was good to, to look into, into Ninja as well because many of you use it. And, in, you know, I also need to say that Ninja Flare have a fantastic YouTube channel with a lot of videos, a lot of educational materials. So maybe this presentation, in a way, was needed or not, depending on how much you like to watch other people's videos. But um, I guess it's a healthy thing that it's been it's been good to do, and um, yeah, so hopefully it was helpful. So thanks for for the suggestion, uh, Mark. So now we can have it, and also for future references, it's gonna be on our YouTube channel. So thank you, everybody, guys. See you on the next one. Thanks for being part of what we do, and uh, trade well, my friends, and see you soon. Bye, bye, everybody.